Hello, class. Hello today. Let me just, you know, get ready like normal. All right, cool. So let's get into it today. Um, we are finally visiting our design your own three scene animation, right? Uh, essentially a custom three scene animation. And hey, Sarah, what's up? Welcome to class today. Uh, how have you been? So you guys have had some time to kind of look th this over and uh, maybe get an idea for what you want to do with this this week's lesson. Now, um, we're going to go through this entire, I'm going to kind of break things down a little bit more for you. And we're going to look at some of these examples a little bit further. And then I'm going to show you some examples of some techniques that you guys can use that have been used in the past. Now, um, this is really a project where I'm not going to be guiding you through everything. This is your first project where you have to think of, uh, you're, you know, you have to come up with your own concept and essentially execute it yourself. But at this point in class, you guys have enough skills and knowledge under your belt to kind of understand how to really execute the things that you're going to be seeing here. And so... Uh, you know, I, I mean, it's very similar to the Monarch, the Monarch Butterfly assignment, uh, except you'll be doing a majority of the legwork, right? Uh, that means you're going to be responsible for the overall plan and structure of the video. And you'll be designing, um, your design will consist of, well, the project, the entire animation will consist of a few different things. Let me just kind of write those here for you guys. Oh, nice. Yeah. Uh, sir, I hope you have fun animating the robot arm. It was pretty fun. Do you have your, uh, ooh, why is that yellow? Jeez, my eyes. What the heck? Z, go back. Get out of my brain. There we go. Ooh, can I do purple? Ooh, is that pink? How about green? Ooh, blue. I like blue. I think, Yeah. Blue is uh, one of my favorite colors. Blue and green. I tend to like cool colors. Just random information. I know you guys really don't care. <laughs> Anyways, so um, the the plan, the overall plan, essentially like uh, layout is gonna kind of go like this. You're gonna have, um, you're gonna kind of. Let me actually make this smaller text so I can fit this on here. You're going to. Come up with a concept. Hopefully you guys have been thinking about them already. Organizing to. Organizing info, info into a script. Then you're going to be recording. Let me, you know, use my brain here. Recording your own VO. Then you're going to storyboard. And creating your assets. Jeez Louise. Create assets. And then finally executing the animation. Right. This is essentially the steps that you're going to take, the process that it's going to be overall, like the overall general process, right, that you're going to be working on. Now, um, hey, Kaylee, you're actually in the suite. Have you been a hidden, Kaylee, have you been a hidden viewer this entire time? <laughs> uh, I just, I'm, I enjoy when you guys join the live, the live chats, you know, it makes me feel, like I said before, it makes me feel like I'm not alone. Uh, but yeah, the robot arm was fun because you guys kind of, you know, it goes beyond just animating ball, like the balls and the bounces and stuff like that. At that point, we're like learning how to connect things together and you're understanding the concept of 
um, like higher level animations, right? Because that's essentially how you, um, parenting and rigging is essentially how you would, you know, create a character animation. Um, there are rigging tools out there to use. In fact, there is a free rigging tool. Um, I know I'm sidetracking right now, but in the chat we're talking about that, so... Oh, you're a secret, you're a sometimes secret joiner. Okay, I'm okay with that. <laughs> so um, let me screenshot this real quick. I will give you guys a second to screenshot this if you want. Five, four, three, two, one. Okay, let me take that off the screen. And there is a free character rigging tool called Duic... Uh, it used to be Duick Basil, but now it's Duick Angela. They've done a an update to an update to the um, script, right? So this is essentially something that you it's an extension of your After Effects program that you install into After Effects, and um, you know this is an open source rigging script or extension that. Um, they name them every year after uh, people who have made an impact uh, with uh, like this, like uh, apparently Maria Angela Salazar Murillo. She was a Colombian act activist for Afri of African descent. Like that's interesting to know. I would definitely like read more about this. Right. You you get kind of an insight into uh, why they make things. They, they do it for a purpose, obviously. Um, which is nice that they that they give such a free they give a free extension to you, which normally something would cost like anywhere between forty and sixty dollars are comparable to the other the other scripts that you would buy, right? But this one's a free open source one, and all they ask is, um, you know, if you can afford it to donate. If you can't afford it, you don't have to donate. But the donations go to a great cause, and so that's why they name it after someone who is an inspiration to them and who drives a cause that means something to the team who who essentially creates this extension, right? And so you can come here and you can download this. Um, and then you can watch some course videos where they talk about how to use this tool and how to animate characters with it. And they've um, it's gotten much better since I first used it uh, years ago when it was called uh, Duick Basil. And, you know, the, it's, it's more of a powerful extension now. It's, um, still doesn't have as many of the features as the extensions that you would pay for, but it has enough to get you by. And now that you guys understand rigging and parenting layers, you can understand a little bit more how this works. These, you essentially create like a skeleton inside of your character at which you um, animate, right? So if you guys want to start looking into like some character animations and having fun with that, uh, go here and try downloading it. It's rxlaboratory.org, right? And then if you can donate, by all means do. And if you can't donate, that's okay, but just spread the word, right? That's that's how that's how we help if you can't. Um, but anyways, uh, getting back to... Getting back to this assignment, right? We're going to be, um, essentially you're going to take all the stuff that you've learned in class, including that rigging project, right? And the Cinema 4D stuff and how to ease and also things like, um, I think I have this later on my notes, but um, animating on a path, right? Using trim paths, things like that. Those are the the techniques that you have needed to know in order to get to this point and to get to this project right here. And so um, you're going to be creating your own voiceover uh, after you create a script. And then um, with that being said, you all have mics that you use for your questions, right? So you can use those mics to record your own voiceovers. Um, but if you're having trouble recording those voiceovers, then just send me the script and I'll record it for you. With that being said, um, if, if you need me to record the voiceovers for you, then I need them by Thursday. They need to be sent to me, uh, by Thursday so that I can, uh, record them for you 
and then send them to you because the project is uh, technically it's due on the 10th, right? So a week from yesterday. And so there's, you know, there's a lot of work to end this one to be done. It's a heavier project, right? Because you're going to be writing a script. You're going to be creating, um, uh, you're going to be doing your own VO. You're going to be storyboarding it. You're going to be creating your assets and then you're animating. So, it, you know, it's, think of how much time it took for the Monarch one and add a few more hours onto that so that you're aware of, of like the length of this project. Now, Let's really look into Canvas here to like deep dive into this process a little bit more. Um, let me go down here. This is the section that I want to kind of focus on right here for now. So the script, writing the script, at least two sentences. Um, if you feel more comfortable with doing another sentence or two, you can do so, but understand that that will and can add more scenes and time to your project. Right. And, um, so just keep in mind, you don't want to have a paragraph of information. If you're feeling confident in your skills and you can stray away from like the, um, that kind of idea, then by all means do, but remember you have to illustrate all of your, your every scene, you have to illustrate them all and then you have to animate them as well. So, um, if you feel like you don't want to make, uh, more work for yourself, then stick to the two sentence, the two sentence template, right? So I'm going to cross this off once I'm done talking about this. Um, you are not allowed to use any, like don't reuse any assets from your Monarch project at, you know, this is completely separate. So it can't be about the monarch butterfly. Um, you know, you can stay along the template of the monarch butterfly, right? Like that you can stay along with a iconographic scene and then the map scene and then um, like a kaleidoscope type scene or a scene where there's a bunch of the ob objects or whatever you're doing your story on in there, right? And if you're feeling more confident, you can stray away from that. Uh, but if you're feeling less confident about it, are you feeling you don't want to um, add more time to your project and how or your crunch for time? I know it is a holiday weekend, so I'm aware of that. Um, but then just kind of stick to this template, the Monarch Butterfly scene layout, essentially. Uh, and we can... Uh, you know, like, like I said earlier, you're going to leveraging all of your skills that you've developed. So, uh, I'll write them down for you right now. What I just said earlier. So animating on a path using trim paths. These are just ideas, right? You don't have to do them, but these are things you've learned in class right now. Cause it's primarily going to be an after effects project. Um, well, I'll say parenting layers and your principles of animation, right? Weight, bounce, those type of things. Uh, depending on what you're doing, you'll be able to integrate those principles differently. Um, I forget that when I do that. Sorry, guys. Ah. Let me move a little slower there. So check, check, check. Uh, use at least two multi-part animated elements like the robot arm and butterfly that are rigged, right? If you're going to use an animal, most likely, and you're illustrating it yourself, you will have to use parenting, um, similar to the robot arm or the butterfly. And so... We've covered that. You may not use, this is a big one, no text in the scenes, right? Only on the credits or if you put in a title. But I don't want to, this is essentially an icon. Ooh, let me see. Yeah, I wanted to erase that. This is uh, iconography, 
essentially is what it's called. Well, um, let me look up here. Oh, I can't go off the screen. Yeah, anyways, it's just going to be... Um, you're telling a story with images and not with words, right? So I don't want any any kind of sentences showing up in the middle of your scenes. If you want to use any type, you can have a title and you can have credits, but that is it, right? We're going to tell the story with our images, which is actually more fun because uh, I know I told you guys type is in everything and you have to know it, but once you get into the fun stuff, that's where that's where you can be a little bit more creative, right? Um, Nonfiction topic. So what is nonfiction? Nonfiction is based in reality, right? Um, you know, you can, a lot of people, you see a lot of people wanting to do things. I have a lot of students who are really into anime and who like to, who would like to do anime characters or, you know, Mario or Ninja Turtles. I don't know. I'm just naming things, right? But that's not your intellectual property, um, and not to say that you can't make something later on down the road with that, but this is really a chance for you to highlight your creativity and your own ideas. And so, um, you know, generally using animals is a really good idea um, because it's easy to find a few facts about like a few facts about animals that you can write an actual script on. And then stick within this, this kind of layout, right? This rough layout that we have for you. Now, um, you know, you could do like, you could do something about space. You could do something about how something's made. But remember, uh, main, main points about it, right? We'll go over, let's go over some of these. Let's go over some of these videos here in just a second. But, um, you know, also mentioning that you can use the format of the Monarch Butterfly. But the, and another big thing is that this is a design class, right? So consider using, consider, you, you have to really consider the way your layout of the entire video looks. And using a consistent color palette and using a consistent illustration style is big in keeping this entire project joined together. Because as soon as you stray away from that, it's going to disjoint that project and, and people are going to lose interest in it or it's going to be too jarring and they're going to say what happened here you know I don't know I can't think of I mean there are some videos where you'll see animators collaborating together where they you know are they give each other a prompt and each one of them animates a scene and then you know, they put it into one big video and that will obviously have different style and color palettes and stuff. But usually that's um, mentioned somewhere when it's posted or or play, given to the public. Right. So but this is not this is you guys, your work. So make sure it does have consistency across the board. And here's a couple of videos for you guys to look at. You can they're LinkedIn learning videos that talk a little bit about using that consistent um, illustration style and color palettes. So let's take a look at some of these videos to have an idea of, uh, let me see here. One second. You. So let's kind of watch these examples and we'll kind of talk about what you're seeing here. And so you guys can get ideas for your project. So I'm going to play this and possibly... Sharks have this organ called the ampulla of Lorenzini. These are mucus filled pores that detects the electric field the shark's prey produce when their muscles contract. So even if a fish is hiding, the shark will be able to find it. Notice how she's playing around, uh, Christine. These are these are past student work, right? Um, she's playing around with the text at the end, how it's floating like the bubbles. Uh, the bubbles, right? If you guys start to do, if you start this and get a he head start on everything earlier, I can always help you with techniques if you have questions about something you want to add into the video but don't know how, right? Um, but a fairly Sharks simple 
overall, there's the same background throughout the entire thing. There's the shark asset, the background asset. There's two there. Um, you know, she has this, which she probably created inside of After Effects, which you could all you could use trim paths on, or you can animate them in little. Ooh, Sarah's got an idea. Bring it to the class, Sarah. Tell me what it is. We can talk about it today and see if we can start something on it. Um, but you know these, and then so some we, rocks the shark will be able to find and a fish, right? Some bubbles going on here. So pretty simple overall. Just a couple facts stated. Um, let's watch this one, which is, I had a student ask me over break if it had to be about a, a, an animal. No, it does not. It just has to be nonfiction, right? So this student did one on, um, I, I was a, some kind of holiday celebration in a different country. So let's play this. Persian New Year is celebrated primarily in Iran, Afghanistan, Turkey, and even Syria. Tradition is set to celebrate the arrival of spring. Some animating the holiday the path has there. seven symbolic items that all start with the Persian letter S. Tons of different assets, right? But, um, you know, something different, something not about an animal. Notice um, each one of them are also crediting the sound designer where they get the music from. At the end of the video, it doesn't have to, the title does not have to have like illustrated by, voiceover by, you know, just animation by sums up that you've done the entire work. And then you also just credit the artist who created the music because that is the only other person that's going to work on this for you, right? Well, has done work that you're using. Everything else will be of your work. Um, but yeah, like something a little bit different there in case you don't want to go with an animal. Sarah says she loves pandas. Yeah. So you'll do something related to that. That's cool. Red pandas or like regular traditional Asian pandas? Ooh, foxes. Ah, we got some cute little critters in the bunch. I'm always down for anything that looks cuddly and cute and like it could kill me, right? <laughs> uh Let's look at, I don't know. I don't Lemurs know share a Lemurs. resemblance. So the lemur one, you're going to see um, a lot of tail motion. Lemurs like there's a lot of mileage. Lemurs share a resemblance with other primates. Here with the tail motion. But they motion. are small, have a pointed snout, large eyes, and a long tail. Lemurs are native only to the island of Madagascar. They there's eat a, a map variety thing of similar to what we've leaves. done before. They chiefly live in trees and are active at night. Um, you know, at some point you can add in an eye blink using path animations, right? Or, um, actually I'll go with and I'll show you guys how to do an eye blink, a better, a good way to do an eye blink and, um, without having to animate a path so you can loop it, right? Which is really cool. Oh, black and white panda, but yeah, red pandas are a little, they're a little stinks. I tell you what. They're, they're probably one of the cutest. I like them both. So whatever you do, good idea. So then um, if you guys, Kaylee and Sarah, if you guys are going to do those topics, which sounds good, like I think those are solid, um, find a couple facts tonight, write a couple sentences, bring them to me on class on Thursday, and I can review them for you and we can like change any of the grammar or anything like that and that's another reason why I want you guys to have your sentences done by Thursday is because then I can go through and help you with any kind of grammatical issues or um letting you know hey this might be too long you might want to slim it down or buff it up a little bit more and so you'll just get a little bit live feedback with that um let us watch this one. Penguins. Oh, the penguin one is cool so the penguin one, you're going to see uh, some path animations here. You're also going to see some, uh, essentially, I mean, their wings. Oh, gosh. One second. Seamus, come on, Papa. Yeah, no, don't get up there. Come on. He's about to turn my computer off, so one second, you guys. Come here.
I just almost had <laughs> like a I just almost had like an anxiety attack on um <laughs> the live stream here because he he was literally on top of my PC tower and he has in the past like shut my PC off on accident by stepping on the button because it's up on the top and so he is such a he's a stinker but anyways back to this video he uh uh, he animates the wings of the penguin, similar to how we did the monarch butterflies. He also uses um, path animations, a few senses. Let's play this. Penguins are a species found only in the continents of the southern hemisphere and its surrounding the islands. The map. While they're classified as birds, they have that with cell and bones and flippers to let them swim fast and catch their prey. Super neat there, right? Cool idea with uh, the way it skids down that ice. The ice block, which I I really like. I think that's cool. Um, Kaylee asked, should we send our scripts in the chat on Thursday or as one of our video questions? Uh, that's a good question, Kaylee. I want you guys to post it into Slack or, yeah, post it in Slack for me. And then I will go through the, um, because I don't want it to get mixed up within your video questions and I need to see it written out so that I can change any kind of any kind of grammatical things for you guys. And then um, after Thursday's class, you guys can record it and start working on stuff. Uh, let me go to, I don't remember what this one is. Let's see, this one's cool. The tropical rainforest. Sim similar concepts you guys are starting to understand. The of the Congo River Basin provide rich habitat to many species. One such species is the hero shrew. The hero like shrew. Shrews, the hero shrew. Uh, we'll talk today a little bit on how to animate the nose wiggle and the wiggling of the tail. Right. I'll go over that as well, and as long with the, along with the blink. Small amphibians and reptiles. More detail Unlike in the shrews, background of that the that first or one. True has an especially strong and flexible spinal column that allows it to bear great amounts of weight. Notice that in this video here. Um, you know, she has something on screen that's not really moving. She did have a fade in of the color, which was, you know, which gave some interest. But there's a slow scaling happening of the entire scene, which it's also, the hero shrew, you know, gives it a little bit of interest and not an especially strong and flexible spinal column makes it so that it's moving. It's not just there standing still. Good one by Sequoia. Uh, I know there is the one. I can't remember. Here we go. There's the one I want to show you with the bees because there's a bee one that utilizes 3D. The capybara is the largest known <coughs> rodent species in the world. Rigging here, Located right? Essentially, Colombia, we have Venezuela, Brazil, and other South American countries. The head is parented the to the body. The capybara could be found flourishing so in vegetation surrounded by lakes, rivers, and other bodies of water. Good way to hide a walk cycle, right? Because it's underneath this water. Um, we have not spoken about walk cycles in class. Uh, that is something that is very in-depth, and it, I've, I've talked about that, right? It takes a lot of work. And so <clears throat> if there's ways that you can hide motion, this is actually used. We use this at my work often because some clients can't pay the amount of hours it takes to do something like a walk cycle for their character animations. So we get clever and we hide it in certain ways. Like maybe we'll shoot, we'll have the shot set up so that it is shot above the waist of the character. So like more of a close, a close shot and not a wide, not a wide shot. Um, which at that point you can just animate the path and the, you know, the up and down motion of it, the position of, of the character. And that's essentially what's happening here. It's just a positional change. So things to keep in mind, right? I don't know if that was reused mu music. I feel like, was that what we had in the Monarch Butterfly? Maybe it's just I heard it so many times I think it is. Uh, this one. This is the one. This one's on Vimeo. Uh, this is Fabio. He creates some cool stuff. And he did one on honeybees. And notice, because you are more than welcome to add some 3D stuff into here as well. Um, I can show you guys how to do a 3D globe and map here to kind of match it a little bit more to 
the 2D because that's something you want to think about. We don't want it to be... If you're adding 2D and 3D, the biggest thing about do, doing that together is blending it and making it look like it fits together. Um, and so keep that in mind if you do want to do a 3D scene. His 3D scene is just very simple. It's a graph. That's all the it is. Honeybee. Honeybees are the only insects tied to Some our icons food there. Supply. That's pretty cool. One third of our diet right is there. part of the plants that require pollination. Honeybees are responsible for this plant's pollination. Without honeybees, fruits and vegetables would disappear. Can nice. You imagine our life. Oh, he did a. Bees. So it Let's looks like he did a character. He's see how much he's done. Like this is a lot, right? Like if you have to think about illustrating all of this, um, he just does a, a foot tap there, and it looks like the arms. Uh, without honeybees. Might be he's got a blink on that character. Let me see what else happened. I th I don't know if his arms would move. disappear. Can you yeah. imagine? So you got to think like anchor points up here, right? And he just did rotation on it. It's just one piece. Now we're live. We this is most likely using the puppet tool, which we'll go over today on how to, you know, sim same way you would animate a tail or a nose um, or anything that's like long and it wags back and forth or moves. It looks like he did the same thing for a leg. So that's Without something if you guys... Bees. Let's save the bees. That's really cool. Yeah, very creative. A lot of scenes in this one. A lot of work put into that one. Um, but yeah, these are all the examples. Like, I want you guys to look at these examples and kind of get ideas and maybe jot them down and and start um, visualizing your own scenes, right? So let me go back here. I think right here, the process. Let's go through this process section. And up here. Um, and this is going to, this is your general process, right? This is a little bit more in depth of what we were saying to you. You're going to write your two sentences. You're going to record your voiceover um, with your phone. But if you have a mic set up and you feel like you should record it, you should be recording it with a mic and you should be recording it on your computer if possible. Now we all have, um, we all have Adobe Audition. There's a video that talks about, um, doing your audio files and how to import them as well. I can go over how to record something in Adobe Audition and see if that will work for us. And so you guys get an idea on how to do that. But, um, you know, just recording your voice, making sure that you're in a room that is quiet, that there is not a lot of background noise. You don't really have your air conditioner running or your heater running, no fans on, um, no distractors, right? Uh, the less you have, like the more, remember the more open a room is, the more it will reverberate off of the walls, the sound. So if you can dampen the room, you get on like saying things in, you know, you had to put a blanket up on your wall. These are just ideas for later. You don't, I'm not saying you have to do that now, but just keeping those things in mind whenever you go to record a voiceover, just making sure it's not some big empty room that it's quiet, you have some privacy, and that way you can record it. You're going to record a couple takes of it, and you give yourself a little bit of time in between. And so uh, we'll do that real quick. I'll do that with you guys. Um, so we're going to, you're going to, you can do this. This is not a bad idea. This really helps you to visualize and kind of take inventory of your assets. You sketch each scene two to five times before you start creating those assets. Um, you know, very rough sketches. Like, they do not have to be detailed. If you're doing a creature, you could literally just use, like, little circle with two little circles for ears to uh, indicate where your creature would go, right? Or little stick legs. Like, I'm not going to look at that. That is for you to plan out the composition of your scenes, right? And how... You want them to be laid out. And then what you'll do is because of that, you can take the inventory of your scenes um, here, right? Oh, let me, wrong one. 
You can take inventory of all of the assets that you're going to need to draw. You don't have to use Illustrator. I am comfortable in Illustrator. Not everyone is. If you want to use Photoshop, use Photoshop. If you want to use Procreate or any other vector like uh, program, use those. You should be comfortable in whatever program that you're using because you'll be fast in it, right? So that's something to keep in mind. And remember that if you're doing something in a pixel-based program like Procreate or like um, like in uh, Photoshop, it's a good idea to make it larger than what your final output of your video is going to be or to make it exactly like 1920 by 1080. But as soon as you start to scale something up, it's going to, any kind of rastered image is going to start to get pixelated and fuzzy. So if you're, that's why creating these, um, these scenes and like kind of getting an idea of, oh, I'm going to scale this up. I'm going to make it bigger. I'm going to scale it down, make it smaller. will give you an idea of how big these assets need to be. Um, determining which ones you'll need to animate and which assets you're going to animate and which uh, parts of those assets need to move independently, right? Because um, it needs to be in its own separate layer if it's going to animate. And if it's animating independently, if it's an independent part of a whole, it needs to be put on a separate layer as well. Same as the robot arm that we did. Um, cause you know, you had like the, the fingers were on a different one. The wrist was on it. You know, they were all on different layers and, but they were all part of a whole versus if I just wanted to animate, um, like a coin or something like a coin spinning in the air and nothing on that coin had to move, right? It would just be one layer. Versus like if I had an icon and inside of that icon I had like, I don't know, a syringe. Let's say I was doing a medical video and I, and I wanted to scale that syringe in separate from the bubble, then they would have to be separate uh, separate layers. You get what I'm saying. Now, uh, you want to create your assets and import them into After Effects um, and create a folder for the assets according, it says to create one according to the scene to keep the assets organized. Um, this is a good idea as well, right? Like if you're, um, I'm a, I vouch for organization all the time. It's going to help you guys moving forward and it'll help you to find things quicker and to, um, hand things off if you need to and people not having issues and you're like, oh, it's here, it's here, it's here. You'll get better at this as you go. But, um, in the meantime, you can do that or keeping them just in one asset folder and not moving them around. Uh, creating comps for each scene and then labeling them. Um, this is something that you can do ahead of time or you can do that as you go. Sometimes I will work as I go because I will add an extra scene in there and then all of a sudden it knocks off the count of my scenes. And so, you know, all that pre-work I've done has been for nothing. But if you guys know for sure you're only going to have this many scenes, then you can more than welcome do that. Uh, lay them out in the scenes, right? Like bring when you import them into After Effects, you want to set them up correctly. I will go over another thing with the importing as well for you guys here. Uh, then you'll animate. Then you're going to put them in a main comp with your voiceover and your music and make sure that your voiceover lines up. And then making sure that your audio isn't going to drown out your voiceover, so leveling your audio, right? Then you're going to add credits um, and make sure they're on screen long enough for people to read out loud. And also you will add in the author of the music that you're doing. And then you will render and submit your project with Media Encoder. And so that's kind of like a higher level of your workflow that you're going to be doing. The requirements of this, this video that I will be grading off of, right? Um, greater than 10 seconds without the credits. This, it... It, if it's 10 seconds with the credits, then you will get points docked off, right? It has to be 10 seconds of just animated visuals. No, oh my gosh, they're going crazy. Uh, one second, you guys, just let me take a quick... I think it's the zoomy hour. And my wife is gone. And so I'm here 
mind you, I am temporarily handicapped because of my legs, so I can't I can't put weight on it and I can't walk around and they're just like fully blown chaos around me. So I apologize for that, you guys. Uh, you know, cat owners, people wonder why we're crazy and this they drive us crazy. That is why. So um greater than 10 seconds without the credits. Uh three scenes. I want to see three scenes, right? So your voiceover might be two sentences long, but you can split those sentences up into sections so that you can have different scenes. Um, up three minimum. Um, two sentences of voiceover plus background music requirements there. Uh, some free options you can look here. Belle posted somewhere where she gets free music as well. And then I believe I spoke about it earlier in class last week on where you can get free audio because I think Eric had a question about that. Um, you will credit yourself as followed. Anim it'll say animation and then your name. And then you'll include the credit for the soundtrack. And then you will um, encode it and export it as an MP4. You can use the Vimeo settings, YouTube settings, anything but just 1920 by 1080, 24 frames a second. And then um, not only upload it into Canvas, but in Slack as well. And so those are the requirements of the video when I will be grading. So let me, let's get to, let's get to some stuff. First of all, let's look up, okay. Are you still with me, Kaylee and Sarah? Are you both here? Please leave a thumbs up in the chat or just let me know. Here we'll do a... I'm going to open up. Cool. Adobe Audition. Okay. Kaylee's here. Kaylee, you said you wanted to do one on foxes. Do you have a couple facts about foxes that you know about right now? We can read them. Ooh, both girls are here. Whoever gets in the chat first. I'll do a couple sentences about your critter, whatever one you want to do. You can always change it, too. I'm just going to bring up some facts, and then we're going to record a sentence or two. Again, they have to be facts that you've essentially, you know, you're going to write the script, so you got to put it together. It can't just be two separate facts and there not be, like, anything tying it. Um, listen to the videos of what you've heard, and then... Uh, you know, write your, write your scripts similar to those, that style. Facts. Ah, about. Ooh, this is cool. Mars. We could do that. We could do a planet. Facts about Jupiter. Jupiter might be cool. Red Panda. All right. Facts about Red Panda. Let's do it. Ah, oh, she got you. She got you, Kaylee. I love creating competitions. Sorry, guys. <laughs> Red Panda. Okay, Red Pandas. Facts about Red Pandas. Oh, my gosh. They're so cute. They're vegetarians. They go into the restaurant. Like, Can I see your vegetarian menu, please? 15 facts about red pandas. The Red Panda Network. Okay. So I am going to... They're not related. That movie, by the way, the Red Panda movie on Disney Plus, cute. That one made me, I was like, oh my gosh, this is a cute one. Uh, let me put some of these facts off to the side. 
That way I can have like something to read off of. And I'm just going to read a sentence from here. Like I said, write it in your own words, please. It said they were a vegetarian, so make sure that <laughs> this is a good point, right? Like making sure your facts are from reliable sources. Dot org, pretty reliable, right? Um, I don't know where the other ones were, but it said it was a vegetarian and they're liars. So let's do something about that, right? Let's descended from the same ancestors and other carnivores, but their diet consists mainly of bamboo. I will read that sentence. Let's see if I don't derf it up. When reading and recording yourself, um, you will have issues. That's okay. Um, you can have multiple takes. That's always really important. Um, taking a breath in between, like taking a moment to state each fact um, in between the sentence is a good idea. Speaking slowly and clearly, other good ideas. Things to keep in mind when you're recording a voiceover. So if we get to it, I'll go over your guys' uh, your guys's Eve projects too. By the way, thank you guys all for getting those in. Let's create a new folder here called audio. And in that, we will have two subfolders. We will have one called VO for voiceover. And then we will have one music. You guys are getting an idea of my way of uh, organizing things, right? Over all the main folder, After Effects folder for any kind of After Effects files, Assets folder for any illustrations, um, images, anything like that, any kind of, uh, uh, like even in here, I would, if I were using two different programs, Illustrate, I'd put like Adobe Illustrator, PNG, you know, PSD for Photoshop. I would have separate folders for that too, if needed, if I was doing, if I were using cross programs and using them together um but okay now i can save my audio and so when you open up audition it's going to look like this um down here at the bottom you can hit record that way or you can hit shift space to record now um if you're going to do this it's going to want you to save your audio file right away so i would say uh red panda Facts VO. Hey, Angelina. Welcome to the chat. Oh, my gosh. You guys, it's like a party. I have friends now. <laughs> um, Red Panda Facts VO. Let's hit OK there. Ooh, already starting to record. And you can see that it's recording my waveforms. It might not look like this um, to you guys as well. This right here is recording levels in a different way. It's just a different, um, let me stop this recording real quick. It is just a different way to view sound and audio. Um, it's a little bit higher level. Like if you're removing, um, like here, you guys can see, if I go to the end here, I think I can record still and it'll, re it'll start recording over, but watch this. You can see when I clap my hands, like obviously that part of the waveform looks different um, inside of this graph. This graph is called the, this is a different uh, frequency type of graph. Uh, either way, um, if anything, it'll be much smaller. Here's your waveform type. But look, like you can literally see where my claps are on the waveform. They're consistent. They look almost exactly identical, right? And so if you get something, um, if I play this back, you can, you can see mouth, you can see pops in your audio. Um, if you need to zoom in on this because you want to see, yeah, BFFs, look, we got friends now. Uh, <laughs> Welcome. We're recording our voiceover right now, but um, if you want to zoom into a section of your audio, like if you hear uh, these, these are called plos plosives right now. If I go, those are plosives. Um, you know, those you'll hear them when you start things with the letter B, P. Uh, you'll hear mouth noises like, I mean, I do that often enough. Um Anything you want to take out, breaths, anything that go, 
you can hear those. You can take those out. <laughs> it's a party in the chat today. We're getting wild towards the end of the semester, you guys. I love it. Um, but you can take those out by doing the following, right? Let's say that I need to, I don't want to, you can, I want to delete these, right? An issue in my audio. I am going to just highlight it, take the little cursor and um, highlight that right there. And if I just hit delete, it's going to remove that from my audio. Now, if I play this back, you can see when I clap my hands, like obviously that part of the way um, to you guys as well. I had stopped in the middle of that, but listen right here is a breath. You'll hear this right here. If I just highlight and I hit playback, space bar to hit playback, you'll just hear the breath repeating over and over. And so sometimes you want to delete that, but sometimes if you remove a breath fully, it sounds a little bit unnatural. So what I like to do is drop down the decibels a little bit. So probably negative 12. It will reset, but that doesn't mean that your decibel level hasn't decreased. And so now if I play it, much quieter. So if I go over here on highlight yeah, and I play again, as well, this right, you still can hear it, but it's just not as loud. So you can do a little bit of audio cleanup this way, right? This is a great idea to do that. Um, you can really get minute into a to a waveform here. If I select, you just select this little bar right there and you go over like this and look how far into a waveform we can get very, very tight into that, which is way better than inside of After Effects, right? Because After Effects is not, in, it's not meant to really edit audio. So when you guys are doing audio stuff, um, in higher level projects, start to use, uh, get used to using Adobe Audition and just, you know, you don't have to be some master mixer or anything like that. We're not producing music, but if you know generally how to edit inside of, um, edit your audio, you'll, you'll be better off. Uh, yeah, plosives are hard when you're trying to record there. Cause I mean, your mouth makes noises depending from where you know it's just it's natural and, and the mics are sensitive so they pick things up now if you're using mics um some mics are not that sensitive if you guys record your Kaylee um quick question I know you've been recording your questions um with your cell phone lately I don't know if your OBS is having troubles but are you having troubles with your mic because if you are um, you also can use headphones that have a mic in them, right? So if you have gaming headsets or if you have um, just any kind of headphones that have a mic in them, you can use that as well. Oh, nice. Yeah. Even the snowball mics are pretty good. I think a snowball mic is like 50 bucks. If And, and they work. Uh, it's called a Yeti snowball mic? Or is it the blue what is the name of it snowball i had one before i've up since upgraded to yeah amazon fifty dollars so you guys could always get one for later right if you want to start this is a good mic it's not the nicest looking mic but it is a good mic to start with for anyone who wants to just you know start doing video stuff and then later on once you make a little more money doing this stuff you can upgrade eventually um, but this is a great mic to use in the beginning. Good, good beginner mic. Uh, a lot of YouTubers, I think, use those in the beginning too. So let's uh, go back here. We're going to delete all of this. Control A, delete. And let's read our, let's read our sentence. Oh, okay. Uh, yeah, the blue, yes, yeah, the blue one. All right. I'm going to hit record. I'm going to take a second before I start, and then I'm going to start reading. Red pandas are classified as carnivores because they are descended from the same ancestors as other carnivores, but their diet consists mainly of bamboo. I'm going to stop that. Uh, I think that you can then... Uh, what I would keep doing is I would actually, let's read it again. Uh, I'm going to pick a shorter sentence. That was a long sentence. That's a lot to say. Let's find something. You know, if you're taking multiple breaths in between each one, then break it up into separate sentences. 
Uh, and that's where your script writing will come into play. Where's that other page that I had the panda packs? Here we go. How about this? I will just read like these overall arcing facts and I'll read two of them together. So that way, you know, they're simple, but they're short enough that I'm not reading like a whole paragraph, even though that wasn't that bad. You could, it could have been rewritten to sound a little bit better. Those are things to think about. Oh no, I'm sorry that you've been having trouble with OBS, uh, Kaylee. So then, um, OBS no one screen record since the first course. I never tried doing the up, or you tried doing the updates. It still won't. So are you, you, you should have a, do you have a mic though, Kaylee? If not, you can use your computer mic or like I said, like headphones, right? So, um, Oh, so Angelina, we just spoke about how <laughs> I, I like the cat in the hat idea. I really do. But um, it has to be nonfiction. So it has to be based in reality. And if cat in the hat were based in reality, then I am in trouble. Because <laughs> I've never thought that. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and read these facts. And I'm going to read them a couple times so that I can pick the best take, right? Red pandas spend two-thirds of their day sleeping. Red pandas have six digits on their front paws. Red pandas spend two-thirds of their day sleeping. They have six digits on... Oops, see, messed up. That's okay. Keep going. Red pandas have six digits on their front paws. And then you can see where the breaks are, right? So I'm like, okay, I like this take. Let's go with this. And then you can export this out. So at that point, you will save. You can save as. Um, Red Panda, that's fine. You'll pick your place where you want to put this. So mine is on my desktop. Under here, 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 audio, VO. Right, and it'll save as a waveform. You can also save it as a .mp4 or .mp3. Waveforms have a little bit more, they're bigger files, and they have more um, detail in them, and they're not compressed. So this is essentially like a raw form of an audio file. And uh, you can do that. It's just a bigger file. It could cause issues, but it probably won't. Um, not for this project. So I'll just save it as that. Now... Here's where you can change that if you want to. You can do the MP3 or you can do the waveform. Uh, the 4800 hertz, plenty. Wait, this is plenty more than you guys need. Um, and you guys don't need to include mark or metadata, but it will it will come in like that, and you'll just hit OK. And then if I go into that folder, it should be in there. Audio, voiceover, here we go. Don't worry about the PKF file. Just keep that together. Um this dot wave one or the dot mp3 is the one you'd want to use and then you can close out of this and i would open up after effects and let me it's starting to open up off screen do, 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 do. has anyone heard that seen the video on like floating around social media it's like it's an animated video of um like someone in the kitchen, for like they have cheese, and there's like a cat and a dog that come in and saw the cheese text, the cheese text. Um, if you have seen that, that is in my head. It's been in there all week. I've been laughing at it. Uh, the chat's going wild today. It's fun. Uh, the snowball one for sure worked for what you needed. Cool. Kaylee has a gaming headset. That's awesome. Oh my gosh. Sarah, we have to have a talk. Cat in the head is not real. You guys all make that. And I'm like, listen, we have a problem, class. <laughs> so I'm just going to say, I'll just put main here. Um, I'll put it at three scenes, like 10 seconds, right? Or, um, well, the main would include your title. And if you want to do a title, right? But it would for sure include your, your 10 seconds of just illustrated. 
scenes and then like three seconds of your your credits. So I'll put 13 seconds total. And um, then I would add a folder. Let's add a new folder into here. And I would type in audio. And then under this folder, I would add two more. Same layout as I'm, if you notice, I'm mirroring the similar organizational skills that I do in just a regular file folders as I do inside of my projects, inside of After Effects. So then um, VO and click on that again and add another one, music. Control I to import. We'll go to the folder here. Asset, not under assets, ding dong, audio, voiceover, red panda packs. Um, and you don't have to change anything down here. It's just like going to import an audio one. And then you drag it down and then you'll level it, right? That's when you can bring this down, making sure your audio and your uh, music, your VO and your music are appropriately synced. But at this point, red your pandas spend two thirds of your audio would be. Um, edited edited down all right so okay you guys want a link of the cheese tax thing let me see if i can find it i'm happy you've seen it sarah this is funny the cheese tax song use the cheese tax on you and she filmed her dogs oh yeah i know because it's a thing <laughs> Uh, let me see. There's different videos people have made too. Let me just see. Price, price tax, the cheese tax. You gotta pay the cheese tax every time you're <laughs> cooking when the cheese comes out. This puppy comes There's videos the rules animated the to this too. And the facts are the facts, and when the cheese drawer opens, you gotta pay the tax. The cheese tax, the <laughs> cheese tax. It's funny because, I mean, essentially it's like dogs and cats love cheese. And that whenever you have it, they're all, give me the cheese. <laughs> oh, see, now I got you guys all going for the cheese tech stuff. There we go. I'm happy. And, and Sarah, no, I totally believe you now. My cat, I try and make him wear hats. It doesn't work. Um, okay, let's get into more stuff in here. Uh, let's go. So when using, um, let's talk about uh, four, 3D inside of inside of your video, right? Because when using Cinema 4D with this project, we want to be conscious about how it looks integrated into 2D space, and we want to make it match as much as possible. So we're not going to be doing, um, you know, we, we don't, we want it to be kind of flat and essentially like cell shaded, kind of like we did the one uh, ball in our weight scene inside of Cinema 4D. Um, so let me open up. I have it opened up here. Let's save the file right away. File, save, project as. I will go to my PC. It is a bop. Yeah, everyone wants cheese. Like, you're, I want the cheese tax. Like, if I see someone in the kitchen getting cheese, I'm like, oh, yeah. I'm just so happy I'm not lactose intolerant. Like, I grew up out in Michigan. Um, if you didn't eat dairy in Michigan, there was definitely something wrong. So, uh, yeah. Definitely cheese tax me. Okay, so we'll save this in here. I'll just say uh, three scene animation examples. You'll you'll name it for whatever, or I'll just put. How about this world scene? We can talk about like a couple different ways to do maps because maps are obviously a common common one to do. <laughs> All right, so. You can use either a globe to do your map, or you can also use a flat um, map to use it. So if we were to take, let me go back here. Do I have it on, let me close this one. Out. Let me see if I have it saved real quick, because I might already have it saved. I 
I will. Map of North America. Let's use the PNG. Actually, so I'm going to close that. And I am going to go here. And back to the butterfly one we did. Come on now. I'm going to download this PNG of North America. Um, because I don't want to come in here and into Illustrator and have to create a new PNG. You know, because that's just extra step for me right now. You guys can do that because you will have obviously more time, but I'm just going to use what I have. So I'm going to take this, show in the folder, cut it, and paste it into the assets folder. Here we go. Okay. So I'm going to keep After Effects open because we'll be using that in a minute. Um, but let's create kind of like a relieved map. So it's going to look almost embossed um, and flat. It's not going to be a, it is not going to be um, a globe. Not this one just quite yet. So we want to go into our object panel here. And there is a an object called the relief one. And you'll just select that and put that onto here. And then you want to import that image that we just saved into the texture the texture box right there. So I'm going to change the color of my thing to you in a second. Go here because it's easier to see red in this program. Um, it says it's going to, it's not in the project search path. That's okay. Just hit yes because it's just going to save the image into its own project path that's like attached to Cinema 4D. And so when I move this around and lift it up, you can see that it was the PNG and it has essentially extruded it out um, based on the outlines to create a relief or an extruded object onto this relief. It's not going to show something right away. You do have to put an image into here. Now, it's obviously way too tall. We don't want that. So I'm going to take um, the Y value and I'm going to just decrease that here. Probably just like 40 should be good. And um, let's throw, let's increase the segments on it so that we get, it's going to sharpen that detail for us. So I'll put like 400, 400. And then all of a sudden you can see I, I've got some more detail going on here inside of the map. And this will work with like any of your illustrations, right? The reason this section is all is because it was a PNG, right? There was uh, an alpha channel to it. So this is all transparent and that's why it's all flat or if it were all one color, like this part of middle America right there, all flat, right? So um, if you wanna smooth this out a little bit, like it's a little a little bit choppy, let's kind of look at the NB. We can see there's a lot of different, there's, oh, I switched. Which one did I hit? There we go. So Bell realized um, last week in class I had accidentally hit something. I thought it was one through four. It was not. It, I hit at my F1, my function buttons up at the top of my keyboard, and I just didn't realize that. So, um, But you can see tons of different uh, polygons into here. Lots and lots and lots of them, right? But if we wanted it to be smoother, it's because I added in... Dang. It's because I added in um, more segments onto it. Let me get a good kind of view right there. This is good enough for it. And these can be used. You'll you'll import this in this PNG sequence right into into um, After Effects, and then you can animate things on top of it inside of After Effects because it's just an image at that point. Uh, but we let's throw it into a subdivision surface so that you guys can kind of see how it'll smooth that out. Drop that in. Let me shut off that that shading and then, so if I were to bring it out again, so you guys see the difference there. Not much of a difference. Oh, I did the wrong thing. Drop the relief into there. There we go. I mean, it looks all right. Not that big. Not that big of a deal and stuff. But if you have another image that needs to be smoothed out, you can always do that, right? So I am going to let's add a. The biggest thing about this is like materials, right? So let's add. We're going to create like a base material here. 
And like I said earlier, the biggest thing that's going to make this look 2D when it comes to when it comes to working 3D is going to be cell shading. A cell shader. Right? And that is is what is going to give this a, a 2D look. And so um We've got our just a, just a standard material. You just have to hit that plus the default material right there. And then you want to go over here to basic and you want to turn off the color channel and just in the reflectance channel. You do not want them on. The only one that you want on is luminance. So I'm going to toggle that one right there. And we are going to then go to the luminance tab. And under the luminance tab, right there, it will have texture. You're going to click that. And then you are going to go to sketch and tune, sketch and tune, and then sell. So when I do that, you'll see what happens. Um, it creates it like very segmented off kind of colors, right? And let's apply this to our, let's apply this to our object. Um, it looks really weird right now because we're gonna adjust some things. Let's add a light into our scene real quick. So because this this specific cell shader, it's in the luminance channel, right? Of the of the material. We just put it in there. And so when it's in a luminance channel, it means it's gonna be affected by the light. And so I'm gonna pull this light over, up and over. Let me see where I'm at with that. Yeah, that's good right now. And then I'm gonna turn on my interactive render region just so I can see what's happening in my in my scene right now. I'm going to increase the size. If you just grab these little dots on the size you can sides you can increase it. Now, it's a little bit pixelated. There's a little tiny triangle over here. If you grab that triangle and drag it up, it's just going to increase essentially like the visual clarity of the of whatever you're doing in there. Just a little bit and then we'll keep moving that. But if I were to move this, let me see move this light a little bit. See how it all of a sudden moves where where that cell shader essentially is on the map. It's it's changing changing its the location of where where that where those colors are. So I'm going to keep that over here. Move that render region back over. I don't know how I did that. There we go. Um and so <laughs> Let's, uh, we want to change, let's click on this again. Let's change the color. So um, you just single click on the material there. And if you double click here, um, it'll bring the cell shader up. And then you can always adjust the colors, you know, based on your color palette that you want to use. You can enter in um, your HSV values here. I think there's, um, you can do RGB if you click there. You can do your RGB values. I think there's got to be like a hex. There's a, your hex number, right? Because all of these are affected. Like if I go into After Effects and I decide that I'm going to draw a square and I want it to be pink. Down here are the different values of that color that you picked. Here's the hue, saturation, balance, right? HSB the red, green, blue of the thing. They're all different. You can type in any of these three codes into there and it will give you the same color as long as you're working in the same color profile, which in After Effects and in Cinema 4D, they, they default to the same color profile. In your illustration, um, here's something you guys need to know. When you're doing your illustrations, um, create the file... using oh my goodness RGB color profiles um, because RGB color profiles are made for screens um, don't use the CMYK because that is for print um, cyan yellow magenta black right those are the colors of ink that mix together to create other colors and they will look different on screens so Make sure that you use the RGB and not the CMYK um, when you're creating things. I'm sorry, not N, but 
but M Y K. Cyan, magenta, yellow, black, red, green, blue. Different ways of measuring color for different um, instances. But let's say like I needed this pink, so I find wherever this hex color is. Like if you use that coolers um, website, you can always do that. And then I would just go in here and I would paste it. And then all of a sudden it is, um, it has this pink color on there as well. Now, as if I take these, um, like if I want to move the color nodes around and it can, um, increase or decrease that color. And it also determines kind of where those things are. Notice how I decrease the magenta color and it, um, if I, it, this interactive render region is not the same as like a render, like if you hit your render thing all the time. So just keep that in mind. You can sometimes hit control R to see what the render will look like, like the render preview, but, um, the interactive render region at this point right now is, is okay. Let me, but like if I were to, let's say I didn't want it to be all this one blue color and then I increase that, it's going to be majority pink at this point on the outsides. It's just determining where it is laying on that cell shading. Now, um, notice down here it says, uh, let me see real quick. Um, we don't want it to use we want it to use the light because we're, we're, we want the light to be controlling where those are at, right? And not the camera. So you want to uncheck the camera and you just want to check on the light there. And then this light really determines, I'm sorry, it wasn't determining before, but now it definitely does. In fact, you can see it right there, right? This is where the highlights are, midtones and the shading, right? That's what these three separate ones are. Now, if you wanted to, let's say you're in here and you want to add another color, you just go in between and you would click, I think, or you, yeah, you just click and then you'd add your color. You can name the step. Um, like if I wanted it to be a green or a darker shade of this, I wonder if I can double click on that. I cannot, but if I go into my hue, saturation, and brightness, right? Um, RGB, hue, saturation, brightness, this one is with another kind of color profile there I've never used before, TMI, I'm not quite sure what that is. Mixing colors here differently. There's a lot of different options you can use, um, but hue, saturation, brightness, I want the I want it to be darker version of that, so I'd hit, just make that darker. This is a great way to build a color, like a color palette, right? Um, and then if I move this light now, you will notice that the location of the colors will change in coordination to wherever that light is. Uh, I think that you can also, if I click on this, let me see what the, what this does. Let's turn that up to like 67. I'm not seeing anything right now. Maybe increase the scale. You have to do that. Mm -mm -mm -mm. Nope, that didn't do anything. I'd have to look up specifically what these values are for. Let me do that real quick. Let's put in zero there. Go back to our basic. Yeah, just make sure you have that light one on there. I thought this would maybe blend it, but it doesn't. So let me see. Um, you know, this is obviously a step color. You could always go into here and create a color palette that's just very close. That kind of creates that ombre or like gradient effect, right? You can always do that too if you want. So um, that's one way to create a map to animate. I can also, let me see, let's do a globe real quick. Render view. Let's shut that interactive render region off. Let's delete these things. 
and let's kind of reset my view. Um, I another uh, Eric wrote me this weekend. He had a an issue with his viewport, where his viewport was all out of whack when he was trying to turn his uh, rotate around his object and stuff. Things weren't the camera, the like default camera view that he was looking through was all crazy and out of whack. If that ever happens to you guys, just come up to here under view and hit. Uh, frame default and it'll reset your camera to where you had it when you started the project um so that's just a little tip for you guys because it can feel like chaotic you're like i broke it i don't know what's happening and that can feel scary when you've done a lot of work so um you guys could also use like an infinite light with that but if you're going to use an infinite light which means like the light is coming from everywhere it's all over it's like it's like sunlight, right? Um, if you're using the infinite light, which is right here, it only, it does not work. You can't move it, really. Um, the only thing, it will look like it's moving here, but it's actually not because it's everywhere. The only thing that it'll work is the rotation on it. So if you guys decide to use an infinite light with that technique, the rotation will work, but not the, um, not the other transform properties so let's make a globe here let's bring in a sphere and increase the let's change it to the hexahedron let's see what the that's the right one that is not the one I was thinking was it nope yeah I think it was this one okay and then we'll increase the segments on it to get it nice and you know smoother and you can always drop it into a subdivision surface there you go we have a nice smooth sphere and um we want to create a material that's going to hold the image of the map right so we'll go ahead and create that new material here and let's find a map that works. Now, when putting, remember when you, if you were to take a ball and that had a map on it, right? And you were to cut that ball down the middle and open it up, it would look different. The map looks different. It does not look flat. Um, it's called an equirectangular map where they take something that is around a sphere and they map it to a rectangle. So you guys all understand when I find it. Equirectangular projection map is what you would want to put in here. And it's just this, it's just a world map. And it looks like this. Now, um, this is a great way we'll save this image and then we're gonna apply it to to our sphere. But the thing is, is we want it to be a high quality image. And so you'll just go up here into tools and we're going to change the filter size to large because we only want, because you got to think if we're going to zoom in on this sphere, on this globe, then we need to, um, we need to really be able that it's got to be crisp. So, um, this one seems to be good. Wikipedia, good source here. You guys might have to, I'm going to just use this one for the sake of time. Um, I will tell you right now, this might not be a great idea for you guys because there is a border around this one of white, which means there will be a seam on the image. If I can find one that doesn't have that, maybe this one. This one will work. Let's use this. Let's right click, save image as. And I will save it into my assets folder of my project. And blue marble, perfect. That's fine. We'll save that. And I am going to take this map and apply it to my texture here. Now, I want to go back into the basic here. And instead of putting it, you can, there's a couple different ways that you can do it. You don't want it in the reflectance channel. Um, some maps will work on different channels better than others. So um, the luminance channel, if you get a map, an equo rectangular map that has a P and that's a PNG. It has an alpha channel on it. Um, we're wrong there. 
Let me see if there's anyone. Like this one. I don't think this one does have an alpha channel, but it could, right? If I were to save this, this part could be um, just all transparent. And this car part right here could be just the gray, right? And so... Um, Sometimes this will work better in the luminance. Sometimes it'll work better in the color. If you put a map image in there and it turns black, just find a different um, map because it's a lot of different steps that you have to take to change that. And um, this is just the quickest way, right, to just find a different image. So if I were to put it into the... Um, they'll look different too based on where I put them, right? If If I wanted to have the shading like notice how this sphere right here has the shading and then the highlight here right I would add the image to the color channel and so let me just hide the hide the shading there um, you can see that it's got the shading there if I were to go into basic only have the color on and I were to grab that image let me see if I have it this way desktop your assets and I were to drag it into oh wrong wrong spot I didn't mean to drag it in there if I were to go to I have to go to the color channel first and drag that into the texture which I can just do right now yes it's going to want to do that um, it's going to add this onto my material. I'll throw it on the sphere. Um, there is, uh, this is because of the type of sphere I did. So we want to go back in here and change this just to a standard sphere. So don't change that. Don't change the type of sphere that it is or it will change the way it's wrapping. Uh, the, the, it changes the way the material, the image wraps around the material, right? So obviously that has to be standard. So make sure... That has not changed. Now we can also um, uncheck the render perfect box. Now it looks a little bit um, pixelated here. Let me see if I hit render. It's very crisp. It's just the render view. But notice how it gets darker in this corner. And that is because we put it in the color panel. But if I were to take this, go back here and I were to remove it, let's say right here, let's clear that image, go to basic, uncheck, check on the luminance, add it to the luminance channel right there. You'll notice that it's going to be flat. Come on now. Yes. No shading happening at all, which um, is a great way to, we'll keep it like this because this is a great way to um, make it match that 2D look. And so in the f beginning part, where does it have the, there was a button. If you're in the color channel, like let's say I turn that on just for, don't worry about what it looks like in there, but there was a spot that said render perfect. Uncheck that if you use it in this in this way, right? Because you don't want it to, um, it'll just increase the, it, it's just to, I think, increase the, I don't know what that one does, the render perfect. I want, I want to find it, but I don't know where it went. I'll look that up for you guys. And if I forget, Belle usually does for me. Thank you, Belle. Thank you, Belle. Um, so, okay, let's do, let's animate this real quick. So I have my texture on there. I'm going to move my playhead to the beginning. And let's say that we're doing something. Where are red pandas from? Do you know, Sarah? Like where they originate from? Red pandas. Himalayas. Eastern Himalayas in China. Southwestern China. Okay, so let's say we're doing our red panda thing. Woo -woo -woo. Make sure that when you're rotating this globe, you're not going all crazy. So, okay, we'll start here. Um, we're going to animate the rotation of the sphere. So 
I am going to keyframe all of the values here. And I'm just, actually, not that way. I'm going to undo that. Instead, I'm going to bring out my timeline, increase this a little bit so I can see. And I am going to just change this value. I'm just going to keyframe this one right now. And I want it to, well, here, let's do this. Before I do that, let's check our project settings. So Control D, let's change the timing right now. Max time, 24 times. Let's do eight seconds. Um, that gives you plenty of time. It might be too long. It might be too short. Um, but there's a way you can fix that instead of After Effects. So um, eight seconds will work for now for the duration of this animation. We don't need it much longer. So I'm going to select that sphere. I am going to keyframe the essentially Y rotation. I'm going to bring this to 80. And I am going to rotate this, change the value, to right about here, right? Because there's south, southwestern Asia, so probably closer to like India. India is technically considered that. And let me select the, we want to go to the F-curve view. Oh, wait. I did that and then I forgot to record it, which happens to all of us. So sphere, let's change that again to right about here and record that property. There we go. So now if I select the sphere, drop down, get that rotation, go into the F curve. Um, I want it to, I want to change it so that it, it's kind of, it's fast right here and then it slows down nice and smooth and slows into that motion. Great trip, wouldn't it? Can you plan that trip for me to China, Nepal, and Bhutan, please? On my Red Panda excursion. Thank you. Thank you, Sarah. Thank you, Assistant. So I'm just going to um, drag this handle down. So it's nice and it'll kind of go quick. Let's watch that. See if I can. Nice. It's going to slowly stop into that, to that area right there. Remember, I increased the time there. Let me... Make it even a little bit faster in the beginning. Actually, let's make it a little bit smoother in the motion, making sure you're not like overshooting, right? Let's bring your curve back into view. So to... that's a nice slowdown. I like that. So I'm going to save that. And then let's um, make it a little bit more interesting here by adding... Um, a camera animation into it, right? So it's almost like uh, like if you were to see on National Geographic or Vox or anything, they're like telling you where the location of something is, um, the world's rotating and zooming the camera at the same time. That's essentially what we're doing here. So I'm going to add a camera into my scene. And uh, we want to, I'm, I'm starting off in the position that I want to be in, right? Um, and then we'll we'll zoom into the spot we want to end up at, that we want to end at. So I'm right here. I'm going to look through my camera. And I am going to keyframe all of the keyframes here. So I'm going to hit this little button right there. And that's going to keyframe everything. Um, I do not have to go into there at the moment. Let me go to, I want to offset it. So I want the, I want the rotation to stop a little bit before the actual camera stops. So the camera's going to continue a zoom. So I'm going to go 10 frames ahead that to the 90th frame. And that's where I'm going to create the zoom. Now, the thing is, if you are on the camera and you try and zoom right now, like if I tried to zoom, um, by clicking this and moving in, it will not do it. So in order to do that, I have to click off the camera and then I can zoom in. Still recording, still recording. I want to be right there. That's about, we'll say that's where it would be. Let me do a little bit of a orbit up. Southwestern China. Probably right there. That's okay. I mean, that's good enough for right now. And then keyframe that. So I made that change. Select my camera. Keyframe, right? Remembering that you have to select off the camera in order for it to... In order for it to... Um, 
to zoom in on that. So if I play it, that camera continues going after the world stops. Um, let me see. Now, normally, remember how I said all the cameras should be linear? In this case, we do not want that camera movement to be linear. We want it to be eased a little bit so that it slows down. It's going to like it's going to slowly get into that speed. It will, in fact, we can update that. Let's go into the F curve and see. There's a lot of stuff going on here. Let me hit H real quick. So I'm going to select all of these. And, oh, that is not what I want to do. Hit H again. Z, go back. Um, if I kind of want it to be, kind of get into that main speed quicker. I'll just shorten these up. And it'll get into that that speed. It'll get to the speed a lot faster. And then right here, um, I'm just like accentuating essentially the curves, right? So, oh man, that went crazy. There we go. It's because I changed the value of something over here. Let me do it again. It's okay. I maybe would not mess with the camera um, easing for this one specifically because it looks okay when you don't change the easing on it. Slows down into that spot. That's good. So I'm going to save that. And let's go ahead and render this out. So I'm going to go into my render settings. We're doing good on time so far. I might not get to your guys' um, Eve projects, but maybe on Thursday I'll get to those, right? So uh, we want it 1920 by 1080. 20, 1080. That was wrong. There we go. Uh, 72, yep, DPI is fine. Uh, let's do all frames. All the frames. Frame rate, remember, change this to 24 frames per second. If you do not, you'll have to interpret your footage inside of After Effects, um, which I think you still have to do anyways. I'll have to double check that. And then under the save, this is the biggest one. Let's put this, let's save this to the appropriate folder. Under my render here, I have PNG sequence. I'll put it right there. And let's... Tick on alpha channel. We want to add, we're going to add our background inside of After Effects. So we want that transparency layer. So make sure that you have that checked on. Now, um, one question last week, Eric had an issue where it wasn't saving PNGs correctly. Make sure that your format and your name are the same, right? Or else if the name and the format, if the extension, the .tiff, or the dot tif here were not the same, then they will render out differently and incorrectly. So make sure you check that. Let's go to PNG here. TIFF's just a bigger file. Um, PNG sequence. Uh, make sure that you're in the standard render, the standard render for this. It doesn't have to be the viewport render. It's not going to take that much time, um, but we're good here. And then let us start rendering quickly. See, right? It's going pretty quickly. Although I have a bunch of frames to do, it'll be fine. Now, the cool thing is, is that while that's rendering, you can actually import it into After Effects in mid-render. Let me delete this layer right here. So let's say new file, and I will put under render PNG sequence. I'll select the first one here. Um, make sure it's footage and a PNG sequence, and I'll hit import. And then I will drag that into my comp. Let me make sure that this here, not file, uh, let's add a folder for my PNG, or what I would call this is like 3D asset, 3D, 3D um, sequences. 
So you could have it like that, and then I could toss that in there. Let's check to make sure that it is 24 frames per second, which it, if I drop this down, it is not. Remember, like this will affect the speed too, so make sure that you're interpreting your footage when you input it in there. So interpret footage, main. Assume this frame is 24. Hit enter, change that, make sure that's done. Then we'll go here. And we have our animation. Notice that it's slow. Look, look how it's, it was still going. It had stopped. Um, my layer wasn't completely filled in there, and that's because it was still. Let me make it white. That's because it was still rendering, and so I all I do is that. If for some reason it doesn't bring your whole sequence in, you can just right click on this, go to reload footage, and you'll click that, and notice how it put all of those new frames in there, right? And let's see if it's done. It should be done. It is fully done now. Cool. So I'll close that out of the way. We'll save that, yes. And I have my entire sequence in here. Stops. Now let's say that it was shorter. Let's say that for some reason your sequence stopped here and you needed it to be long, right? All you have to do is come to where it stopped and you right click on the layer and you will go to, I think, time, freeze on last frame, right here. Come on now. Oh no, don't open things. My clicking got crazy. No, don't open Photoshop, you're gonna crash. Close that, crash my computer. <laughs> Sometimes when Photoshop and After Effects are open at the same time, it like, just take so much energy out of your computer. This one, not so much my, I like to call it my big rig, the big rig at home, but the smaller laptops might just spontaneously combust. So just so you guys know. Um, anyways, that was, um, like I said, let's say you you made it, it's too short, you need to lengthen that last frame because you're putting animations on top of it. Um, you'll just right click, go to time, and then freeze on last frame, right there. I think that I accidentally closed the the zoom it program. I don't know. It was just taking a while. Freeze on last frame. There we go. And so, did it work? Um, see, notice what it does is it adds this little keyframe here. It's a hold keyframe. And so it stops that. And so then all of a sudden... Um, it lengthens it the entire length of my composition. So then I don't have any problems here, right? Um, Kaylee said, I'm going to save this project real quick. And then I'll look at your, what you said in the chat, Kaylee. Just one second. Where did I have it? Desktop. JCSR. Um, After Effects. Racing custom. I'll just name it that. Kaylee says, my Eve project would not allow me to use the physical renderer. It kept saying that there was no more space in Cinema 4D, even though I have files on my hard drive and delete old projects off of my computer. Sometimes it's just based off the hardware, Kaylee. So like so if your if your computer is not built to render um your videos and that, it won't do it. Um, it. No matter whether the space is on there or not, it has to do with like the hardware of your actual, the the components of your computer and not not the, the space. And so that's just like, it's just a drawback sometimes of the, the hardware that you end up having. But the if you need to use a viewport renderer, that's okay. The standard renderer for something like this should work for you. You shouldn't, you shouldn't have a problem with it. Um, so now let's say that we wanted to add like a little ping marker in here that is going to show us where specifically red pandas are at. Let me see where Bhutan is. Bhutan location on a map. Okay, so Bhutan is like, because here we have, here's like Vietnam, Myanmar, of course, like, um, or Vietnam, Thailand, 
then Myanmar. You've got Malaysia down here. India is right here. Uh, Nepal. So, like, we're looking, like, right around here, right? Because here's the, here's the mountains. Um, so let's, yeah, let's put a little kind of a ping mark there. So I'm going to lock this into place because I don't want to move it. And let's throw in a background real quick so that we can new solid, just see it. I am going to put a blue in there or maybe a dark, a dark purple. Too dark will drop. You won't be able to see the this the actual thing. So actually, let me go to let me go to blue like this. There we go. That works. And then um, so let's draw the. I'm gonna lock that up too, so I don't move that. Let's draw the ping, the location marker, right? That I call it ping. I don't know why I'm saying that, but it's a, essentially a location marker. So I'm going to pick a different color, probably go with red because red is easier to see. And we're going to go to the part where it stops right there. And I'm going to draw this here. So I'm going to draw not, not a square. Let's draw a, nope, not the color. We're gonna draw a circle right here. Not a rounded rectangle, but an ellipse. And I'm gonna hold down shift and just kind of draw one like that. Now we want this all to be one single shape. So when you add to it, right, make sure that you're selected on this layer. And if not, then you end up having to um, just pre-compose it. So this let's create another let's duplicate this ellipse real quick here and then i'm going to name this red this one white and let's scale this one down a little bit let's go to the ellipse path and take that size and decrease it slightly you're going to see it decreasing in there and then i'm going to change the fill color to a white one Let's say this would be, this could also be your icon, right? Could be a circle with the picture of the red panda in it if you wanted to, any of that. Um, it's not showing up here because the layer order is incorrect. So you just reorder that layer. And um, let's kind of create the, let's right click here on this ellipse and convert it to a bezier path so that I can grab this section right here, hit V. And I can, holding down shift, kind of drag that down. And then I want to adjust these handles. So let me hit shift. I want to break them. Sometimes you have to go into the convert tool here. For some reason, my alt wasn't working. So if you go to, oh, come on. If you go up to, you're selected on your path, you go up to the pen tool. It'll be like that. And then you just hold click convert vertex tool. You can click on this vertex. Um, and holding down alt, it'll make it pointed at the bottom for you. Like a perfect point. Because it removes any of that bezier um, path on there. So then if I were to click this, if I were to not hold down anything on my keyboard and click it again, it makes it round. Holding down, uh, or just, you don't even have to hold down alt. You just click click on, click off. And so we have like a perfect um, location marker and we'll rename that layer to location marker. And let's update. We want it to animate from the bottom part of it. And so I'm going to select my anchor point tool. I'm going to hold down shift. I'm going to drag that down and it'll snap there to the bottom. And let's change the color of this to maybe yellow so we can see it a little bit better. I'm gonna hit V to go back into my selection tool. And now I want to animate not only, let's kind of get it in place here. We'll say it's right around here is where we find some red pandas. We're gonna zoom out. That's a little big, so let's change the, uh, okay, this is 100, we'll hit fit there so we can see. Um, we'll change the scale a little bit down to like 80. That's good. 
80 is like our max that we want this to be just because of how big it is you know depending on how you design yours will be if you have to change the scale of that or not now we don't want it to end up there we want it to start kind of right here so um let me let's move ahead to three seconds 12 frames and we'll we're going to animate backwards right and then i'm going to go back and scale that down to zero and let's add we can add some overshoot here so this one could go to 85 and then i'll move ahead one two three four frames and then put it back down to 80. So let's see how that looks. It's gonna pop and pop and bounce down. Let's increase this to 90 so it's like a more prevalent bounce. And then we will just take this and, and kind of move it one, two more frames there. So it's like, let's see that. Okay, not bad. We can adjust the time here in a second. And then let's ease these keyframes. So if I have a PC and I hit F9, it's gonna ease those. And we are going to go into our graph editor and let's kind of let's change this graph around so it looks a little bit more like this uh, actually I'm just gonna take this one kind of move it like that and so not bad the timing is obviously it's too slow for me so let's uh, let me just go halfway in that's six frames from the, if you look at my time thing, it's three seconds, six frames. And then I'm gonna go two, three frames ahead and then add that other one. Come on, there we go. Move that one to here. So it's gonna be fast. Nice, that's good, not bad. Um, you can always play with the, I'd probably play with the easing a little bit more here. One, two, three, I accidentally undid that that there I want it to happen kind of much faster let me see I like that more so I'm actually going to kind of change the easing of this let's zoom in on this a little bit more so we can see it a little better all right and then I'm going to bring this one it's like it's a little bit too funny there I want it to smooth out there in fact I'm going to take this and move this back up like that holding down shift cool that's not bad um, I guess I do want to take this and kind of move it holding down shift to a different section Right there. Eight, nine, ten, two, three, four. We'll do four keyframes in between. That looks good. That that timing is much better. Um, so there we have like just kind of like a popping on animation. You can duplicate these, right? Now to give it a little bit more interest, let's add a little rotation into this as well. So I'm gonna hit um R and then keyframe that and I want it to end up in this position but I want it to start rotating let's do like 90 degrees right so then if I go in here and I ease this and we'll add the overshoot in a different way here I hit F9 ease the keyframe so I'm going to go into here and um it just it adds like a visual interest to it because you're stacking the animations, right? There's two things happening at once. And let me take this one and we are just going to drag that down a little bit. So it's going to go up. It's going to over rotate a little bit and then it's going to rotate back into to place. And we're going to take this one. Drag this out a little bit more here. Cool. Nice. Um, so like just a different, and then we can take this, right? And we can offset it a few frames from the scaling, one, two. And then if you play it, it just looks, a, it just looks a lot. It just gives it a little bit more visual interest because things are overlapping. Um, there's like a secondary animation kind of happening. Maybe do two, three frames. 
Maybe not that many. I think I just like the one or the two. That's cool. The one. I'm going to save that. So that way, you know, that's how you kind of integrate the 3D into a 2D look. And then let's say I wanted to change the way the color was on my on my actual sphere. If I go into my effects and presets and uh, let's type in, so there's a couple different ones. There's like Colorama, which you can use, which was used in a past, past video as well. We'll add that onto here. Notice it makes it really crazy looking. If you go into the output cycle here, you can, if you click and drag up, it'll take these nodes and remove them. So you don't have to have all of them, right? And then if you, I think if you double click or you alt click, control click, one of them, let me, control, oh, Z, control, drag. Yeah, if you hold down control, click on a node and drag, it'll add more to there. But let's say you only wanted three colors on here. You could do this. You could change where those colors are by rotating the um, nodes around the circle. So this is like a way to do this, right? You can, let me see if you can modify. You can use preset palettes here that are built into After Effects. Um, I would pick, if you double click on here, you can enter in either the hue, saturation, luminance, B, brightness, luminance, brightness, same thing, uh, RGB, red, green, blue. You can enter your values in here um, and add these colors as custom ones. Uh, that's one way to do this. I think you can also, like if I were to remove this from here, you can try using like tint. Let me see. Color correction, tint. Yeah. So tinting remaps colors based on like your black and white, right? So if I wanted this to be, if my whole color was like pink, the pink colors, I can make everything that's black pink. Come on now. Hitting OK. And then, like, let's say I wanted this to be a lighter form of that pink, so it's all kind of monochromatic. Like that. Add a little bit more red into it. You can always do that. You can change the amount that you want it tinted here. There's also a, uh, there's a, um, there's one you can map it to the shadows, midtones, and highlights, which is, I think, color correction. You can add like levels onto here, curves onto here, change color. You could use that, you can mess around with that. There is, Tritone. And that way you can map it a little bit differently so that it's mapped to the the colors there. So like if I wanted this to be like a deep, kind of more of like a deep purple, I could do that. Do this. Like come in here and color pick off of that, move it up, make it a little more pink, do the same here, color pick that pink, move it up, over to lighten it, we want that, right, that's the highlights, and maybe increase the, the hue a little bit, so it's a little bit more red, like you can do that, I would probably make this, obviously it's too close in color, so I'd drop this down a lot and, and build a little bit of a difference in there. And you know, this is not going to look perfectly flat 2D because the map is really detailed, right? But if you were using one of those maps where it's just, it doesn't have any of the landscaping details, it's just like a flat vector, um, that would look really good using this as well. So just different, some different ways to do some map stuff. Um, and then um, really compositing that 3D PNG sequence over a background and then adding animations on top of that, right? And then there was also, let me see, we've got 30 minutes. 
Um, let's add, let's do something with a pin tool. So are you guys still with me in the chat? Let me see here. Red Panda, PNG. <laughs> Yeah, let me save. This one's cool. So uh, there we go. Ooh, is this really going to be a PNG? So I don't know if it's really going to be a PNG. It says it is, but there is like this thing on, there's this thing that goes around the internet with designers where you laugh, where people will design the um, little checkered background into the image and say it's a PNG and then you download it and it's not. And it's like a horribly mean trick that people do. Uh, type, let's do, first of all, we'll do a large size so it's nice and crisp and we can increase that. I thought there was a way to, maybe there's not a way to do that, but I think the other one would have been okay. Let's try it. Let's see if it is any size. I'm going to take a chance. Save image as. It says .png, .png. I'll save it to my assets folder. We're going to bring it into here. Right. Import file. Actually, let me. It is not. See how it said it was a .png? It is not. It's a trick. I fell for it. Okay, so let's delete that. Um, I would add a folder in here that would say assets, images. I would even drop my 3D sequences into there, that assets folder. Let's find, let's find an actual PNG. I uh, should have known. That's not on. Mm -hmm. I'm trying to find one. I want to use that one so bad, but it's not. Okay. So, and you guys might have to do some, you, you'll have like images drawn, right? So let's just do this with a simple shape and I'll kind of give you an idea of how it works that way. So I'm going to take a rectangle. We're going to create a rectangle here. And let's choose the fill will be like, we'll do a, a blue because the, uh, because the puppet pin tools are yellow, just so you guys know. And this is a great way to do, oh shoot, hold on. I'm selected on the location marker and I don't want that. So select off and now I'm going to draw this here. And... We'll just put tail in here so you guys understand that that's a tail. And then, you know, center your, or you'll you'll have your anchor point where it needs to be, which would probably be at the end somewhere. So I'm going to hit Y for my anchor point tool. Click, shift, and drag this way. And up here, there's a little thing that looks like a pin. It's called the puppet position tool, and you'll click on that. And you are going to start to add pins along your image, right? Now, if it is an image of an animal, you need to pin all the way around the animal. And it doesn't mean that you're going to animate all of these, right? S some of these are going to change, but... Um, if you don't add enough pins and you start to move around one or two of them, it can distort your image like in an odd way when you start to move those pins around. So you don't you don't have to move all the pins, but you just want to make sure they're there to essentially like anchor down the image in those places um, or else it starts to get really weird. Now, remember, the more pins that you have in here and the more of them that you're going to animate for like a tail whip. Um, this would also, this is something you would do on the nose of an animal, like an anteater or something with a long nose, a little sniffer, a dog that has a snout, dolphins, things. I mean, like you wouldn't make a dolphin sniff though. So, 
But um, what happens when you add the Puppet Pin Tool in is there's um, an effect that is added to your to your layer. And if you unfurl that, and then you unfurl a puppet, and then there's it creates something called a mesh. And we're going to unfurl that again. It's kind of far down in here. And then under the deform is all of these pins that we have entered in. Now, if I hit, if I select, a quick way to get to that is just select on your layer and hit U. It automatically places keyframes. Now, notice that my playhead was over here. And it made the key, it put the keyframes over here. And that's not what I want. Right, so make sure that when you do this, your playhead is in the position that it needs to be at the beginning. I'm just gonna select those and move them over. And now, if I move over, let's say like six frames, and I start to move some of these pins, let's say from here, 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 it's gonna start to animate. It's gonna start adding in keyframes to any of those movements that I made. So we've got that. I'm gonna move in another few frames and I am going to maybe animate it in a little bit more. Well, no, let's change this one real quick. Right, this is just like a rough estimate of it. And then I'm gonna move in I'm going to curl it a little bit more, bring that up. Mm. I don't know if I want to too much move from where it's originally at. So notice it's like growing, right? You don't want that to happen. You don't want it to increasing the length of it necessarily. Um, you just want it to, let me just redo these. But you kind of get the general idea of it, right? And and you have to think, too, that a tail, when an animal moves its tail, it doesn't move it back and forth and back and forth and back and forth over and over and over again. Um, because we want to create, like, a looping animation here. Um, and so you want it to kind of stay flat in the beginning and um, then move and then finalize into that last, uh, that beginning motion spot, right? So I'm going to actually... Let's work backwards here. Let's copy all these keyframes. Let's move to like the two and a half seconds there. And I'm going to paste those. And then I am going to paste them again right here, the eight frame in, so that um, during this time, it's going to stay flat. And then it will start to deform right here. We're going to just kind of oh, select that one. You want to make sure that you're selected on the move tool there and you're going to select that one. Oh, come on now. You don't want you don't want all of the layers highlighted. That's what you didn't want. Select that and then we start to move the tail. I guess the biggest thing would be keeping the tail in the same general space. So just moving it up a little bit, moving it up a little bit. You can hold down shift with this, moving it up a little bit, moving this part up a little bit. And then I'm going to go in another few frames and notice it's going to start to come down because it's trying to get into that resting position that you had. But I'm going to move it down now. Shift, holding down shift. I'm just going to kind of make it a little opposite of that. Holding down shift, holding down shift. Notice it's like pinning this into space, but I kind of want it to stay a little bit flatter there. And so then let's get a cur let's get a curl into this. So we're going to kind of go this way. We're going to kind of go this way. Kind of go this way. Ah, did I change the wrong ones? I think I moved. I changed the wrong ones. Easy, easy. Hmm. What did I do here? Uh, I have to... I, I think I started moving my ones that were supposed to stay in place. So I'm going to take these again. Control-C, Control-V. Copy those. 
and move to here. And this is where I want to start the motion, the movement of that tail. I'll just keep doing. All of them were selected and I didn't want that. So just click off and click onto your layer or click onto your mesh tool and then just kind of we'll do a whip here that way so it's like oh it's not going to be perfect right and then we want it to go back down here so let's I'm just going to delete these and redo them just kind of opposite of that I'm selected on all of them again unselect all of them go back down here Go back down here. Maybe this one's up a little bit too. It starts to distort things, remember, so. There. And it would whip back up, back up. I think it would do, I'd have to look at it and then settle back into the place. That's okay, we'll do that. And then you can um, ease these keyframes if you want to. We're getting short on time and I wanna show you a blink animation. Um, but right, what the nice thing about all of this is it can be looped. So um, I'm gonna hit Alt, click on that stopwatch and you can either come in here and you can go into I think the looping one is under comp. Nope. nope. Here is just right here under path proper or under property. You can type in loop out. Or what you can do is, here's a nice thing about expressions, if you just start to type loop, being careful not to add any L-O-O-P, it'll give you the options and you can just select that or highlight it and hit enter and then click off and it'll loop out for you. And so then you can select that property, you can right click and hit copy expression only, and then you can select the position, control C, or just hit control V because it's already copied to your thing. And then that's copying that loop out expression to all of these. So then whip, whip the tail. You have a tail animation, right? This will take a little bit longer. Remember the more pins that you have. A good way to do this is to draw a guide, right? Watch how an animal's tail moves, draw a guide for it, and then kind of follow that guide along um, while animating. I think that that would make a really nice um, tail whipping motion or like a tail um, like a tail motion with that. Um, so that's that's how you use the puppet pin tool. And remember, um, like I said, I think that one student used the puppet pin tool on their animation of that character for the character's leg, the way it was tapping and kind of bending a little bit. Um, that seemed to be a puppet pin tool as well. So you can loop those. You can loop that out, which is really nice. Now, if I wanted to add, like, let's say my, my character's eyes, um, we want to add a blink. I am going to take the rectangle tool. I know it sounds crazy, but we're going to start with the rectangle tool. And we're going to draw two different shapes here. Um, this first one, I'm going to hold down shift and draw a box, like a, a full, like a square. I'm going to click off and this... Shift controls, there we go. And the second one, make sure you're not on there. I'm gonna draw an, like a rectangle. And let's name this square. Well, let's not name it that at all actually. Let's, let, I'm just gonna show you guys how to do it. So under the square one, the first layer here, you're gonna drop under contents and under your rectangle and um, rectangle path and under roundness you're going to increase that all the way and it's going to make a circle here and the nice part about the reason we want to use a square and not path animation is because the way that it will animate the closing of the eye it just looks a little bit more natural it's a little bit quicker 
Um, and it, it's from the center of the of the actual shape. Now we can't you can use scaling if you want to, but when we start to do the scale, you see it kind of deforms the shape. And we don't want to deform the shape of the object. We want to just make it close. And so instead of using the scaling, you want to go back under that rectangle path and unlock the size and you want to change the size and notice how it closes it kind of more like the shape of an eye, a little bit more like the shape of an eye. So if I go back all the way and I am going to keyframe the initial size, remember to keep that unlocked. And I'm going to move ahead about three keyframes, three to four, because that's a good um, amount for a blink. And then I am going to change this to zero the Y value is going to change down to zero. And then I'm going to move one, two, three, four frames ahead. And I'm just going to click this one and I'm going to copy control C, control V and paste that. And so then we have a blink animation happening here. And then you can just copy that and move along down here and then you paste it so that, you know, let's say, uh, I think the average human blinks, the average human blinks about 12 times a minute. So just kind of keeping that in mind. I know animals are different, but that's like more of a natural blink. Like, okay, there's some time in the middle. Takes a second, blinks again. This may be a little bit too long. I'd probably add another blink in here in between. But that's kind of how you do a blink um, with like a square shape, right? So let's do it again with this. So we've got a rectangle. We're going to drop this rectangle path down. And we're going to increase the roundness to 100. I think just 100 will do. Nope. Just until it's like fully oval shape, like a pill shape, right? And then I'm going to uncheck that unlink the size. I'm going to move to the beginning. I'm going to keyframe that initial size. Move ahead one, two, three, four keyframes. Bring this down to zero. Move ahead one, two, three, four keyframes. And copy and paste that first. Uh, value keyframe. Now here's the thing, right? You can't put the loop out. There's um, a way to loop based off of markers that you put onto your, um, it's called animate on marker. And um, like, let's say you have your layer and you add a marker by hitting the asterisk. It would add animate on that, right? But that takes um, some coding and we unfortunately don't really have time to explain that coding to you guys. And so um, you'll just have to go through and just copy and paste them and make sure that you're doing it for both eyes at the same time so they don't desync out of each other, right? Because look, all of a sudden it has the one blink, but then only this eye blinks. So I would just at this point hit you on that, that one and I would go here and make sure that my playhead's in the right spot and I'd copy paste. And then I'd move over here to where this blink happens and I'd copy paste or I'd just paste. You don't even have to copy because it's already copied. And that way, both eyes will blink at the same time. And you have a nice quick blink happening here. So you can add this, this kind of technique to your animals. It works with shape layers here. If you create an eye um, inside of After Effects, you can create an eyelid using the pen tool in the color of the, like the skin tone of the creature or whatever it is. Like, let's say our creature had, it's the red panda, it's got the red, reddish orange fur, right? So I would actually go down here. Hey, that's almost like a great color. Right about there. Perfect. Okay. Whoops. Not the eye. But we can change the eyes to black. So we can almost do, let's see here. Let's close this, click off, grab this, change the color to that red. Bring it up a little bit more, right about there. And um, you can create a path, right? Holding down hold down shift right there create another one and you'll just kind of create the shape that goes over the eye to essentially emulate like an eyelid right 
And then you can create another one around this part. Maybe taking more of a time, sorry, taking more time to um, line up this these two vertexes. Right, and then we would do a path animation here. So at this point, I would probably bring this down a little bit, remembering, right, that anything around there, you need this color to match it. So you don't want to have, like, gradient stuff because we want it to blend into our creature or object. And I would, like, label this one upper lid. lower lid and then I would go into the path I would just type in path here where's the second shape that's that what is this what is this one ah I accidentally added them both onto one so that's fine this was the RI <laughs> never mind um, but you can animate both of the paths. So on the one there, so you could just go like that and let me bring this down. You would want to name these little groups, the upper and lower eyelid. And then I'm going to move over, hit you to see just that, clean it up and then select this and then just kind of go up to about there come down to about here right this might be might where you want to start so maybe we could swap these by selecting them all right clicking keyframe assistant time reverse there closing all the way we want it to I'm just blocking this out right essentially that's all we do we're almost on time so I'll just kind of making sure I don't select all of that, just select hitting V and just selecting this one right now and then selecting both of these ones at the same time and kind of moving them up, taking this one, moving it down because I want it to still stay like rounded, selecting this. Here, let me show you guys. Let me take off the alpha channel. That way you can see that. You know, holding down shift, moving that down, then continuing until this is fully met with this and they're almost flat or it's fully flat right they cover each other it's like a blink and then I would probably move to here select all these keyframes control C control V right click keyframe assistant time reverse them and so then you have like a blink. Obviously, I would take more time with this because, and you would want to ease these and then work on the easing, the curves of it. Um, and the timing, right? It's way too slow. But this is a general gist of how else you can animate a blink. So a couple ways, right? If your eye's flat, you can animate a blink that way. Or you can do some path animations to make it look a little bit more realistic. Um, this is obviously more of an illustrated style, but yeah, just a couple ways to do some different kinds of animations. So today you guys learned, um, you know, you learned about the process about putting the whole entire video together and you learned about how to create kind of like that 2D look in 3D on both like a flat map and then a globe and then animating that globe, importing it into After Effects. Um, compositing that onto a background, adding in, compositing additional animations on top of that, and then also animating with a path and animating, um, I'm sorry, not animating with a path. You guys already know how to do that, but animating using the pin tool and then also animating eye blinks, right? So some good, um, good things for you guys to start. There's some good references and uses of that. So with that being said, let's just kind of go over, ah, not a timer. Next class, what I need you guys to have. So, um, have your sentences completed. Um, 
and posted on Slack so that we can go over them or slash email them to me um, in Canvas or send them to me via Slack or Canvas. But um, posting them in, in the general chat will give you kind of an idea of everyone else's their ideas too so it might make you change your idea or whatnot but um have your sentences completed and posted on slack on thursday so that i can go over them right um let me know have that done specifically and let me know if you need help with the vo but this is only if you need help, right? Like I really would prefer that you guys do it on your own. So if you're recording it and it's sounding really weird and you can't edit that audio inside of Audition um, to make it sound a little bit better, then you can contact me and let me know and I will do that. But they have to be ready on Thursday, right? And then um, just two sentences or slash facts are fine. Um, just don't do a paragraph. And then, um, yeah, that's pretty much it. So on Thursday, I'm going to go over your guys' Eve projects. I'm going to go over your questions. And then I will go over your comments, right, or your sentences. We'll probably do your questions first and then your sentences. Um, and then if I need to record any voiceovers, I will do that then because I will just do that on Thursday. So if you need it done, do it then um, so I can record them in class. And... Then, um, and then if we have time, I'll go over your Eve projects. And if not, I will, uh, I will go ahead and grade your Eve projects over the weekend. But with that being said, I've been noticing your guys is posting them in Slack and, and things are looking good. You guys are understanding the concepts. You're getting better at easing, you know, working on, um, timing is getting better. I'm noticing you guys are really, um, you're just incorporating the things that you're learning and you're, there's less to fix, right? You're noticing that there's less feedback coming to you. Sometimes there's more, sometimes there's less. Um, I did give you guys feedback this weekend on a couple of your projects, including the robot arm, as well as the, uh, the revision round. So I left information that needed to be like additional revisions on your revision round projects that could be done for the next revision round if we get time to it and if not those need to be done for when you put them in your portfolio because that's going to be our final project is putting together a portfolio so make sure that you make those changes to your revisions that you've already done make another revision even if we don't get to the assignment I might just add the assignment in when we don't have such a heavy project um, to do right now it's just too much to add on to like this project um, with the robot arms I uh, if you didn't have it turned in that's okay I put a zero in for a grade as a temporary but I just want it turned in by the 10th of April I'm going to start to get a little bit um, harder on the deadlines most of you guys are meeting those deadlines anyways which is great uh, but the 10th it's due or you don't get credit so that's kind of how it goes but other than that, I hope you guys have a good night. And I'm excited to see all of your topics on Thursday. And if you're not watching this live stream right now, I will go ahead and add a note into Slack so you guys are aware that that is due on Thursday for me to go over and kind of revise anything that needs to be done. Maybe we'll just, by revise, I just, maybe we rewrite a sentence so it's a little bit stronger. Um, but in general, the topic's going to stay the same, right? So I hope you guys have a good night. Uh, and thanks, chat, for getting crazy. I've had fun with you guys. Keep coming back because I like interacting with you guys. It makes me feel like you're actually in class with me. Uh, but keep up the hard work. You guys are really doing good, and, and I like all the creativity I'm seeing coming out of you guys. So have a good night.